if I can have your attention, please. Well, good morning. It is uh, a huge pleasure to welcome you to the, uh, we've worked out it's the second CGFI uh, annual forum uh, here at uh, One George Place. Uh, my name is Rowan Douglas. I'm director of the Insurance Development Forum, and it's my pleasure to be your, uh, your MC uh, for today. And uh, first, actually, to sort of send an apology, although we'll be hearing from him in person, uh, Ben Caldercott should be here. I got a call uh, on Friday saying, could I stand in and be uh, the MC? Because uh, Ben is doing his duty out in Singapore and has been um, uh, detained in Singapore. So very sadly, couldn't actually make it here. He's B Baroness Penn, he's doing great things for Britain out there uh, in Asia Pacific and helping to uh, green that side of the world as well, I'm sure. So uh, we're going to be hearing from um, Ben uh, in just a minute by video. Um, but uh, it's an incredible program. I mean, you've all seen it. Uh, I can say good morning to everyone here because it's actually just a, an in-person uh, event, although all the sessions are going to be recorded. So uh, feel free to uh, enjoy them at your leisure or pass on details. Um, some sessions will have some Q&As. Some Q we'll try and keep things uh, as much to, uh, to time as possible. Uh, we're going to have a few keynotes and then we'll be breaking into our first panel uh, on CBEZ uh, in uh, a little later on. But with that, I'm going to say, I think we've got 300 people here today. People have been coming in all the time, but let's, let's get going. Can I say those magic words? Run VT. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the CGFI Annual Forum 2023. Uh, my name is Ben Caldercott. I'm the Director and Principal Investigator for CGFI and it's wonderful to welcome you to One Great Draw Street for what looks like and I'm sure will be a, a very successful event. We've had over 400 people uh, register, we have a wait list, we have wonderful speakers. Um, you're in a fantastic venue and um, I'm sure it'll be a, a great success. Um, on my part, the only flying ointment is that I'm not able to, to be there with you, and I'm really sorry to have to do this introduction virtually um, as a recording. Um, but what I wanted to do in that brief, in the brief introduction uh, I have with you is to introduce you to CGFI, to say a bit about the successes we've had over the last year, and also to flag some of the things that we'll be doing in 2020, later in this year, 2023, but also into 2024, uh, you'll have the opportunity, of course, to speak uh, with colleagues across CGFI, across the consortium. Um, many of our, our team are present uh, in, in the room, um, and you'll be able to talk to them at panels during the networking sessions and so on. So please do, if you're interested in anything that I mentioned now or anything else that's mentioned on the panels, please do seek out um, colleagues and, and they'll brief you and there'll be opportunities obviously also to reach out to us later. Um, but let me start by saying a bit about um, CGFI, particularly for those that might be uninitiated, might be new to what we're trying to do. Uh, so CGFI was launched uh, in 2021. We began at operations in April 2021. We've been set up um, to be the national center to accelerate the adoption and use of climate and environmental data and analytics by financial institutions glob globally. The origins of CGFI uh, were the green finance strategy that came out in 2019. Um, and one way to think of us is, is essentially you have one, one pillar within that strategy that's carried, carried through, of course, which is on financing green, and another pillar which is also carried through called greening finance. And in the strategy, the government announced that it was going to set up something called the Green Finance Institute to focus on financing green. And um, in many ways, that's our sister institute. It was set up a bit earlier than us. And then we've been set up, funded by UK Research Council funding, specifically for the National Environment Research Council, but also Innovate UK, um, to work on the greening finance piece. And that's really about bringing climate and environmental science right into financial decision making across um, the financial system across different types of uh, finance use case, across different types of financial institution. Um, where would we like to get to? What are we trying to achieve ultimately? Uh, it's very ambitious. We want to make sure that financial institutions can access climate and environmental data and analytics for any point on planet Earth for, for historically, so they can access past data currently, so they can access up-to-date data, even in near real time, and then data 
that goes out, projections that go out over time horizons that are relevant for a whole variety of different financial decisions. And we want this to be available for the whole range of material, climate and environmental risks and externalities. Now that is quite some uh, to-do list. And, um, and we're doing this, trying to do this through a variety of different programs, projects, initiatives that you'll hear more about in partnership with financial institutions, but also with policymakers, with supervisors, with civil society, and with with other uh, other actors, including, of course, other researchers uh, outside of the UK and across the wider UK too. Um, what does success mean? Well, it means that individual financial institutions will be able to better measure and manage risks and externalities. It means they'll uh, be able to integrate that into what they do and shift capital allocations accordingly. Um, it means that individual financial institutions will be more, more um, resilient. It also means that the global financial system will be more resilient. And it also creates opportunities for innovation and commercialization, particularly um, for London and the UK as a global financial center. And that's something we will come back to and you'll hear more about uh, throughout the day, our activity in innovation and commercialization. CGFI is a consortium. Um, centered on universities, and you can see here the universities that are represented, so Reading, Bristol, Imperial, Leeds, different departments in each, Oxford, uh, which is where I'm based. Um, but we also have other bits of the research community uh, in the UK as part of CGFI, so the Science and Technologies Facilities Council, for example, um, the Alan Turing Institute, which is the National Laboratory for um, machine learning and AI, and the satellite applications catapult that's focused on commercializing opportunities from space-based technologies. And then we have a whole variety of partners that integrate in different ways across the consortium. Um, and many of you, of course, are here today. So thank you for all the work that you do and the support that you provide and the, um, the input that you're, you're uh, putting into making us um, fulfill the, the, the objectives of the mission that we, that we have together. Um, this just shows you how we're how we're organized and what I really wanted here for you to focus on the the the, the, the columns um, the three core research themes um, on physical risk transition risk and also nature uh, risk and I should say risk and externalities as well um, and, and impact it's not just about not just about risk um, uh, and you can see that under each theme, we have a variety of projects and programs. Um, these are all at different stages, they're all different sizes, they have different leads. Um, but the idea is that they're connected, interconnected, they're benefiting from the, the scale, the capabilities we can provide as a national center um, and are supported by these cross-cutting activities. And again, we'll hear more about these from, from colleagues. Um, so I'll, 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 I won't go into too much more detail here. Now, in terms of some 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 highlights for you. Um, so the first I wanted to mention is around um, flood risk analysis. Uh, the risk posed by heavy rain and strong wind is suspected to exacerbate, um, is, is, sorry, is ex expected to be exacerbated by the way they co-occur, uh, yet this remains insufficiently understood to effectively plan and mitigate. So we have a team of CGFI researchers at Bristol and Reading as well as other partners who are developing a, a new flood severity index, um, as, as well as examining correlations between wind and flooding in Europe, Europe and the UK um, in relation to extreme weather events. Um, this work is, um, is visualized here, as you can see in the slide. Um, it's all on the website, on our website. Um, and you can see the correlations between, between wind, precipitation, river flow, and so on. Um, so that's one, one example of uh, a set of outputs from CGFI uh, over the last year. Another uh, example is a team of CGFI colleagues at Imperial developing a new open global tropical cyclone hazard model. Um, this is available for past and present timeframes, different scenarios, and seasonal forecasts. And this is going to be published soon through our Global Resilience Index tools. Um, and you're going to hear more about GRI uh, just a, in a second, because that's the next slide, but also from uh, colleagues that have been working on this very important initiative um, that was 
launched in Glasgow at COP26, but over the last two years has progressed very significantly. So this is a Global Resilience Index initiative. There are a variety of tools, again, available through the CGFI platform um, and some examples of use cases for climate stress testing, disaster risk financing, infrastructure investment, um, as well as climate-related financial risk disclosures. And the idea um, behind GRII is to provide open, globally consistent climate risk data for governments and financial institutions. Um, and that's a, a hugely important um, thing to do. Uh, and um, you'll hear more about, about GRI um, throughout, throughout the day. Um, another thing we wanted to mention, I wanted to mention was the work we've been doing um, with the Bank of England. Um, and this essentially is reviewing, assessing the impact of the CBES, the Climate Biennial Exploratory Scenario exercise um, on participating financial institutions. So what can we learn from that, um, that climate stress test? Um, and how can that inform future stress tests? So again, a team from a drawing, from a drawing capabilities across the consortium has produced this work and you can see the publications. Again, all of this is, is online and available to review. Um, another thing we've been very involved with, uh, and so we co-lead the Secretariat for something called the Transition Plan Task Force. Um, this is a globally significant uh, initiative defining what gold standard transition plans um, can and should look like. Transition plans, transition planning are going to be incredibly important um, going forward, not only for risk management, um, but also for understanding how companies and financial institutions can actually support the transition um, in, in, the, in, in the different jurisdictions in which they operate. Um, so we've had a busy year. We're finalizing a disclosure framework. We're finalizing uh, sector neutral guidance as well as sector specific guidance. There's a sandbox. Um, there are working groups now on nature, on just transition, on adaptation. Um, and the team is doing a, a significant amount of international engagement. And a lot of our conclusions are now emerging in guide, guide, guidelines and recommendations from processes like the International Sustainability Standards Board, the ISSB. Um, so if you're interested about the, the TPT, please do engage with, with some of the colleagues um, today who, who are working on this. And you'll hear more about the TPT on the next, um, on the first session. Um, spatial finance. So this is the integration of geospatial data and analytics into financial theory and practice. This is something we've been working on um, for a long time, pre-CGFI, um, but CGFI has enabled us to accelerate the work that we do on spatial finance. Um, we've been expanding the coverage of different open, publicly available asset level data sets. So these are for specific sectors where we seek to characterize and identify the owners of different assets. So you can do asset level bottom-up geospatial analysis of, of what are the risks, what are the externalities um, at an asset level, and you can aggregate that up to the company level and then to the portfolio level. Um, so a lot of work creating these consistent asset level data sets. Um, you can download them online. Um, a lot of these data sets are ingested by data providers as well. So you, you might be accessing it through, um, through those distribution channels. Um, we've also launched regional data sets. So this, these are um, initial kind of pilot data sets. So we've done that for beef processing, petrochemicals, pulp and paper, waste management. Um, and we've also published an updated review of states and trends in spatial finance. Um, and we're continuing our work to expand, expand the coverage, both in terms of geographies for these specific sectors, but also for other, other sectors. Uh, innovation. So we've had, excuse me, a, um, a big year. You can see here some of the things that we have announced, the partnerships that we have, um, the prizes that we have, um, and the networking events that we've, we've organized. Um, Part of our ma mandate is to stimulate innovation um, in producing the next generation of robust green finance analytics. 
Um, and that part of that has been supporting projects funded by Innovate UK through their SERAF program. Um, and those are going to be showcased uh, as part of the forum today. Um, we've also been bringing together different parts of the ecosystem through networking events at, at, our, at our two innovation hubs, one in Leeds, one in London. Um, we've been stimulating new product and service ideas through the Climate Investment Challenge Data Analytics Prize, uh, as well as the, the aforementioned Transition Plan Task Force Sandbox um, that I mentioned just before. And we've also developing and have developed a partnership with the European Space Agency um, to try and attract more funding into, into this area. So, so a, a lot going on and a real testament to uh, the team, um, the growing team. So we've been busy filling posts, recruiting, expanding, uh, developing new funding relationships to underpin those positions and trying to build a national center that can endure and, and provide the capabilities that the wider sector requires. Um, in terms of the kind of future work, um, you can see here just some, some highlights. Um, there's gonna be guidance on high impact, low likelihood events. And that throws up some particular challenges for uh, financial institutions in terms of uh, pricing those sorts of risks and measuring them. Um, we're going to be producing guidance on quantifying and interpreting uncertainty, uh, which is um, in, 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 in many ways the name of the game. Um, there'll be more work on measuring physical risk, particularly um, a case study looking at pension funds and real estate, uh, real estate portfolios. Uh, we're doing a lot of work looking at um, asset level data sets in UK agriculture. And so the results of that and the data sets associated with that are going to be becoming available. So for those of you that are working on agriculture, um, and the idea is that we might be able to extend that work to other jurisdictions. Um, we're developing methods for assessing the data quality associated with emissions. Um, and as many of you will know, that, that data quality can be incredibly patchy and inconsistent. So how can we assess data quality? Um, and then there's a growing body of work and I'm sure this is reflected in the room. Um, more work on nature, uh, nature related dependencies and impacts and, and associated metrics. And colleagues will be ramping up our innovation ecosystem work. Um, so uh, an ever growing program of networking events and hackathons and masterclasses and, and also an internship program as well. Um, so we have a uh, really exciting agenda. Um, uh, there are going to be a few more um, opening remarks. Um, so you're going to hear from Baroness Penn, the Lord's Treasury Minister, shortly. Um, and you're also going to hear from NERC, um, Ian Williams from NERC. And then we will pivot to the first session on transition plans and transition planning. Um, and again, all of this is going to draw on work we've been doing across the CGFI consortium. Um, there'll be a session on stress testing and scenario planning, um, incredibly current and very important for driving behaviors across the financial system. Um, and I don't, you know, I for one think that, that stress tests will be, um, you know, the CBEs won't be the only climate stress test. Um, I suspect there'll be other, other ones um, coming down the track. Um, to see how market participants uh, are actually integrating these things and, and, and working on them. So you hear about that, we'll then have a lunch. You then have uh, David Craig, um, who's giving the keynote um, on nature-related financial risks and opportunities. Um, David's the co-chair of the TNFD. Um, there'll be another session after that focused on nature. And then we have a session focused on um, combating wind flood risks. Um, there are also uh, parallel sessions in the Godfrey Mitchell Theatre. Um, so you have an, an Innovate UK uh, innovation showcase at 2.30 and then a Merck research showcase at 4.15. So a, 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 lot, a lot going on and I'm um, really gutted that I'm, I'm not going to be there. But before I hand over to Rowan, so firstly I want to thank Rowan 
for um, agreeing to be the master of ceremonies and for being, um, I suppose, uh, uh, you know, one of the fathers or grandfathers of, um, of CGFI. Uh, Rowan had been played a critical role in, in getting CGFI up and running and serves on our advisory council. So thank you, Rowan, for, for being the MC. Um, I also wanted to thank uh, the team, the wider team. Um, well, the whole consortium has been involved in organizing today and contributing to the different sessions um, and designing the sessions. So thank you for that. Um, and then specifically, uh, a few members of the team have been very involved in organizing today and have made it all happen. So uh, firstly, Alex Jackman. Um, thank you, Alex. Alex Horgan. Uh, so thank you, uh, uh, Alex, number two. <laughs> Um, Christoph uh, Stien, uh, who heads our Spatial Finance Initiative and also plays a really important role in the, in the innovation work, has been instrumental today, and also our centre manager, um, Jimena Alvarez. Um, so thank you in particular to, to you for, for all the hard work you've done. Um, so with that, I will hand over to Rowan um, and thank you. I must say, I don't think there's anyone who could have done such a fluent, comprehensive, uh, uh, sort of succinct presentation from a hotel room uh, somewhere in Singapore over the, over the weekend. I'm sure we'll all convey uh, our thanks to, uh, to Ben. It's such a great shame uh, he can't be in here uh, today. But uh, I mean, he, he touched on the challenge that we are all working together in this collective endeavor. How do we get physics properly into finance? How do we properly marry? human and physical geography with economics? How do we ensure that the City of London and the world financial system is as comfortable looking and working through maps as we're looking at spreadsheets and other outputs? Um, what we're doing is really hard, but ultimately it's, it's to retrain the invisible hand to make sure we take account of the things that matter and, and shape the flows. So, uh, and, I think we'll all feel we're in uh, we're in great hands.